So uh, continuing the presentation with this question, you may ask yourself why we need to go to, towards two. Why stage? We need to stage the clinical trials. So uh, this is a good figure to show that for any clinical trial or any treatment or any medical um, procedure to be proved efficient and safe, there is a valid and standard process, which we, what we call phases of clinical trial. Uh, Tran explained a bit about what happened in the laboratory and uh, what uh, Kaylin and her group in the Galil Health, uh, Galil research team, to uh, conduct uh, heaps of research on cell line and animal models and saw that the, this MBS treatment is uh, safe and um, effective in um, generating uh, myelin and keeping myelin alive and supporting by the nerve cells. So this is a typical study from lab to the clinic. So with the help of the MS flagship clinic side and the lab side, uh, we designed the phase one of the study, which I've already reported the result. We found it is safe. But this is not sufficient. We need to prove that this is efficient as well. This would change uh, or this would affect uh, positively the uh, indicators or, or outcomes that affect the and people living with MS. So we need to uh, recruit more participants to be able to uh, prove the efficiency of this method. So the phase two study requires more participants, which in a standard pattern it requires hundreds of people. Now I would like to invite uh, Professor Bruce Taylor, MS neurologist and the clinical lead of uh, MS research flagship and the uh, principal investigator of the TORUS II study. Thank, thanks, Armin. Um, and uh, Tran, Tran and um, Armin have really summarized you know, the you know, people, it's sometimes the, one of the considerations is that, you know, you make a discovery in the lab, you know, it's, it, it will immediately work on humans. Why do we have to go through all this sort of rigmarole to prove that it works? Because, you know, you, you're not talking about um, something that's, you know, take a tablet, you know, has no side effects. You're talking about something that people have got to come in every, every day for four weeks and have um, a, a stimulation. It's also expensive, the equipment, you need people. And you need to know that it works and you need to know it's safe. And uh, MS, has been played for you know, generations by people doing an experiment on one or two people and saying it works and then trying to, and then when it's done on a larger scale, it doesn't work and it can be harmful. And, you know, we don't know, and we don't know whether this works. Our preliminary data, which Armin and Tram have presented from the lab and from phase one, would tell us that there's a good, you know, that, that, that we, we've got enough information to move this uh, trial to the phase two, which is, a much larger trial which is going to be rolled out um, hopefully very soon and includes um, Launceston and Lauren Giles is here who will tell you about uh, Launceston's involvement in this trial. It's also going to be running a number of sites in mainland Australia. So, um, you know, what is, um, what we're going to do is basically do the same thing we did in Taurus 1. People are going to be um, enrolled who have MS, who've got a particular disability level, and I'll describe that a little bit in a few moments. It's going to be running these five centres and possibly another centre on the mainland. Um, we are hoping to recruit 120 people with MS and we can enrol them to have either real stimulation or sham stimulation. And what we all, one of the important points from the first trial was that um, we showed that Armin and Tram can give uh, people sham stimulation and the people who did not know whether they were getting the sham or the real, they couldn't pick it. And so that's really important. So they, you know, the only person who knows whether it's the sham or real is Armin and Tram, but they're not involved in the analysis of the data. So it's a, it's a blinded trial. So it's really important. And that's a critical point because being in a clinical trial, people want, to, want it to work and they have a, a large placebo effect. So, you know, we could do anything to people in a clinical trial and we could find a meaningful difference from them from baseline to the final time point. But that doesn't really mean anything because that could be placebo. And what we need to know is that what we're doing is safe, tolerable, and not only that, but effective. And that's the purpose of a phase two trial. So um, basically, we're going to do exactly what we did in the, uh, the Taurus trial. We are aiming to recruit the people in five sites. We're able to, it says 108 up there, but we, we, we were hoping to really get to 120 because some people 
Um, in all sorts of the clinical trial like this, we'll have a degree of attrition. Um, we're going to compare um, functions beforehand, afterwards using MRI, essentially the same thing. But we had to change one of the markers that we used in the first trial, which is called the floodlight, because it's no longer available. The, the company that, that makes it, one of the drug companies, has, has taken it off, um, all out from research for, for reasons we don't understand. So we've replaced it with. Uh, a marker called the multiple sclerosis functional composite score, which basically does the same thing, but doesn't do it as um, neatly as, it, as the, or it does it very neatly, but doesn't use a, a, a mobile phone app to do it. Um, we're going to particularly look at um, <coughs> the MRI scans, because the MRI scan is actually showing that we're adding, if, we, if it does continue to show what we showed in the first part, show that we're adding myelin. Um, so we, again, now people have 20 sessions. We'd like them to complete that in four weeks, Monday to Friday, daily for uh, about 15 minutes, and then um, have two MRI scans. Um, the main outcome measures will be the, uh, again, it's going to be safety and um, tolerability. Were people able to get in, have the study, have the treatment, and then we've been very interested to know whether it affected the MSFC, which is a multiple sclerosis functional composite score, which is made up of a, a time 25 foot walk, a nine hole peak test, which some of you may have done, where you take, where you've got to actually pick up nine pe pe peaks from a dish and put them into a grid and take them out of uh, the, the uh, grid and put them back in the dish. Do that in both hands. It's a measure of manual dexterity. Then we're going to do a, a test of uh, cognition, which is called the single digit motility test which is again a very well validated way of looking at processing speed within the brain. Now we're hoping that, the, that those um, these will show the same trends that we saw with the first phase of the study. Um, we're also going to uh, do the same MRI measures that we did in the first part of the study and they will be analysed centrally at um, the City Neuro Imaging Assessment Centre. So what are the inclusion criteria? Now it's always ages clinical trials, I'm really sorry about that, but um, 18 to 65, we, we're older than most people, the most trials, but above 65 people get other um, reasons for cognitive decline. They don't necessarily respond as well they, because of the natural ageing of the brain. And um, so we just have to, we have to try and select a group where we'll think we'll see the most, uh, if it's going to work, we'll see the, the improvement. They uh, must, must have MS, obviously, which is also very important. You know, they must, not, they must be stable and not have had a relapse recently. And, and also must be stable on treatment. And they must have an expanded disability scale of 1.5 to 6, which means they've got some, uh, some disability so we can actually measure change, and, but they're not so significantly disabled that um, we're not going to be able to reliably measure change. So 6 means you need to use a cane for, um, for um, most activities of daily living. So, um, uh, and then, again, they must be willing to uh, participate, which is incredibly important. You know, this is, this is not, this is a, you know, a, a fair, it, it is a hard, it, it's, it's hard work. And one of the biggest advantages we had was that Armin and Tram, Tram was so fantastic with everybody. And people would start a conversation and they'd have this conversation for 15 minutes a day for four weeks. And then we're disappointed that they didn't have to come in and finish the conversation, which is fantastic. Um, and, you know, there must, obviously people must have the ability to, capacity to um, provide cons uh, um, consent and be willing to and able to participate in all follow-up assessments. Exclusion criteria, they, one of the important things is you've got to be able to have an MRI scan, so you can't have any metal in your body which would prevent you having an MRI scan. Um, uh, you know, the, the people who are pregnant or when wanting to become pregnant, we can't give an experimental treatment, even though we, I sincerely doubt it would have any effect, but that's just one of the things that you can't do in a clinical trial. Now there's certain things we, you know, people, if you have stimulation of the brain, you know, there's a, there is a slight risk of um, causing a seizure. And again, the type of transmission, the stimulation we're giving, it makes it very, very unlikely, but people who've got a history of seizures, um, uh, you know, and, or stroke, or brain surgery, or, you know, a bipolar or mania, just because they can actually be upset by magnetic stimulation. Claustrophobia is an important one, because you've got, you, you can't have an MRI scan if you've got claustrophobia. Um, you know, significant head trauma. Uh, again, you know, there's uh, you know, and you know, uncontrolled migraine um, and it is also one. But some of these things, substance abuse is also another issue. But in some of these, there is discretion that if you know, if people get uh, infrequent migraines or they're very well controlled, 
or they've had a past issue, you know, uh, uh, substance abuse, then we can uh, allow them to be in the, in the study. And if they have had minor head trauma, it's not an issue, but we just need to be aware of that as the investigators. Um, also, some medications which may affect the way MBS affects the brain, particularly um, tricyclic antidepressants in therapeutic dosages that we would use to treat depression, not in dosages which people will use to treat bladder dysfunction. And um, there's a number of other medications, now, uh, antipsychotic medications, which do affect the way the brain responds to brain stimulation. So you, when, if you enrol, we'll ask you about what medications you are on. Again, must have a, 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 you've got to fit into the EDSS range and the age range. And in, if people have previously had um, brain stimulation, which is sometimes given for things such as depression, we, we, don't, we can't have them people in study because they'll know that they're not having the real thing. <laughs> So, and they must be English literate or have someone who can provide um, appropriate translation and um, or if they're currently involved in another interventional study or investigational study, you can, we can't have people with any of those two. So, oops. So, how do you get involved? Well, um, in Launceston, Dr. Lauren Giles is going to give us a, a few words. She's a neurologist in charge in Launceston. Um, Bruce. What? There's a section in jump. Sorry? There's a section in your jump. Oh, oh yeah, this is what I'm sorry. Oh, the project. Yeah, sorry. So these are the people who contributed to the project. Um, uh, and particularly, I'd like to uh, really emphasize that what we're doing is based on the work that um, Kayleen Young's group did in the lab. This is you know, groundbreaking, innovative, you know, world-leading research has come from the laboratory and now we're taking it to the clinic. And this is the sort of research we want to be doing in Tasmania. This is research which is, um, you know, as I said, groundbreaking, internationally significant research. And I think, as you see, there's quite a number of people there. And a lot of people you mentioned, Carly Cullen and Mark Hinder, who's our TMS specialist from works at the School of Psychology. Um, Kalina um, and Natasha Stevens, who's been instrumental in getting this uh, work off the ground. Angela McKechnie designed the database. Julie Sampson, who is the new coordinator for the um, Taurus Du, Vincent, who's our clinical research fellow, who's heavily involved, Armin and Tram. particularly like to thank the funders of this project, which is the Australian Government Medical Research Future Fund, the Iron, particularly the Iron Phelps Charitable Trust, and also the Clifford Craig Foundation. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and in Launceston, I'll let Lauren um, thank the people in Launceston. So just one section with me. Uh, during this study, we had the opportunity to uh, talk and spend time with a number of lovely participants who devoted their time and after a couple of weeks became our ambassadors and uh, inviting their friends and uh, relatives to the study. So one of those uh, lovely people is Meg Denham, who's a trial participant and person living with MS and also uh, one of the members of the consumer and community friends uh, committee and uh, we had discussion before and I uh, asked her to share her experience in this study and, he, and she kindly accepted. So May, can you please describe a bit your experience? Oh, this is just... this one yeah. Okay. So, um, so my experience, I was diagnosed with MS in about 2010. Um, when I was first diagnosed, you probably wouldn't have known that I had MS, but gradually my mobility has dropped off, I can walk less well, I've tried lots of different um, disease-modifying therapies over time, but still I'm going downhill. So then I came to this trial. So how did you hear about the study and why did you decide to participate? So I'm part of the consumer and community reference group. And so that was uh, put to us as being a really interesting trial. I thought that sounds fantastic. As well as that, there was a great presentation last time we had one of these, and that absolutely convinced me. Uh, it seemed so interesting and such a good thing to be a part of. And how was your experience within the, during the study, the 20 sessions and three months afterward? Well, I would say I was one of those people who just enjoyed um, being with you, part of it. It was such a... It was lovely to come in every day. It was a very small impost. Um, quickly come in, get uh, my head zapped over, ears zapped over there. There was an MRI, there was some little tests. Uh, it was uh, a very easy process. 
as I say, the support for getting in, getting it done, very easy every day, and of course the people were lovely, so that helped. And my final question is, uh, um, we had a discussion before, and you said it is important to participate in clinical trial for the uh, MS community, so what's, what's your opinion? Can you please share this with us? Yeah, I think it's not just important, it's really vital. It's, it's the way that we get these really great ideas from research actually out to the people who benefit from us, and that's us. And so if we don't do this, they just stay in the lab, people think that they're a great idea, but what we really need is we need these, these processes, these treatments to come out to the people who will benefit from them, and that's us. And so the way we get that to happen is that we participate in the trials. We give a little bit of our time, and out of that, we all benefit fantastically. And uh, I think this is a really worthwhile one, particularly. Thank so. you. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Adi. Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Giles. I know many of you, but for those of you I don't know, nice to meet you all. Um, I'm, I'm going to take up just one minute of your time just inviting um, local Launceston participants to be involved in this trial. So we're very grateful to Bruce and the team for asking us to participate in this trial. I give lots of talks to medical students and junior doctors about MS and I always finish with a slide about remyelination and about how this has long been seen as the holy grail in MS land and it really is. So if these sorts of this treatment or other medication that are also being tested for remyelination um, at work then we're really getting close to a cure for MS. So I think this is incredibly exciting. It's incredibly exciting for us here in Launceston as well. It's our first toe in the water since I've been here in, in clinical research. We hope it um, paves the way for lots more north-south collaboration. Um, I'm also grateful to the support of the Clifford Craig Foundation. We're lucky here in Launceston that we've got uh, a sort of a fundraising body within the hospital called the Clifford Craig Foundation who support a lot of hospital-based research, not just through funding but through the uh, uh, ability to access uh, extremely skilled clinical trials and nurses, some of whom are over here today. So Monica and Shelley will be um, leading the, the Taurus uh, trial from a research nurse perspective and my sidekick and partner in crime, Karen Lewis, uh, will also be involved in, in recruitment of, of people. So just flying the flag for Launceston, this obviously is a trial where being nearby the trial centre is key because uh, you're coming in every day for, for a month. Um, so if you're interested, we're not actively recruiting at the moment, but we're very happy to take names and we'll get back to you when, when we're ready to go. So please participate.